Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another Layer by Layer. In today's tutorial, we're gonna take a look at the heat press project that I put together, and we're gonna take a look at some assemblies to see how we can switch out components uh, using uh, Fusion 360. So let's jump right into it. So in Fusion 360, I have this assembly put together. And the interesting thing about this is that there are some external components that are brought in and linked, but there are also some components that were designed within this document. Uh, so the goal here is that I want to switch out this roller carriage for a different type. So if, if we look here in the document, you can see that the roller carriage, it was designed in here and it's not a linked component because it doesn't have that little link there. Uh, so before I uh, replace this component, it's uh, since it was designed in here, it might be a good idea to export it out. And it's easy to do so. You right click on it and say save copy as and that lets you save a Fusion 360 archive file, which will contain the original sketches, the future timeline, that sort of thing. It's really important though to open that document and double check that all your sketches uh, are there and that there are no kind of errors and things. Because if you create a document uh, with uh, some references, some projected edges perhaps, then uh, you might run into some uh, some errors. So this one seems to be okay because I'm trying to design things uh, without using so many uh, projected edges and things. So that one's working out. So I already have it saved out and that leaves me to be able to kind of delete this. So in Fusion, we can just right click and say delete. Now it's gonna tell me, hey, there are some things in the timeline that are referencing this. Um, it doesn't tell me what they are yet, but uh, if uh, when, once you do hit delete, you could always go back. But in this case, no errors have come up. So what was happening is it's just the joints. There were uh, an arm was was uh, joined to that roller carriage, and so was something else. But Fusion will do a good job of caching the position of this, and it'll present to you now: Do you want to capture this position, or do you want to revert? Uh, in my case, I'm just going to say revert because I really don't need to have it where it was because uh, I'm going to join it uh, to the to the roller to the new roller carriage anyway. The new roller carriage was designed in a separate document, so it has its own handful of hardware and linked components. So you can totally have a linked component and then link the linked component. It, it, if that made sense, um, you can have components that have linked components in them. So you can have this linking link which is fine. So I have that handle that, that, that was a linked component. It was designed in its own document. It was brought into this document. Uh, and now I'm gonna bring this one into, into the, the main uh, assembly here. Now, before I bring it in, it's super important to, to, to think about where I actually wanna put it. Cause like 90% of the time when I import stuff, I always put it in the wrong spot or I'm not in the right folder. So let's say I have a hardware folder and there's subfolders in there. You want to make sure that that is uh, selected and active before bringing anything in because you kind of don't want to have to have these extra uh, elements in your timeline that are just things moving around. So I'm going to make sure that I'm in the top document here. Yep, I am. And now I'm going to bring it in with the uh, insert into current design. All right. The next thing I want to say is like we could just say, OK, but I think it's much easier if we orient, spend the time to orient the part instead of having to put a bunch of offsets into our joint once we uh, once we have this in. So I'm gonna orient this as best as I can to match up where it needs to be. So in this case, I just have to keep orienting it. I think one more turn this way and we're almost there. Okay, cool, so now I can Start manipulating it this way. We got all the rotations set up. And then this way here. <clears throat> cool, so that works out. So I'll hit OK. Now, now that because I have uh, moved it while I was importing, uh, there's no need to capture a position because it's just kind of the initial placement of the component. So that's one way to avoid having to use captured positions so much. All right, so now the next thing is to apply a joint to this. And really, we want to have this thing, this plate centered with uh, one of the profiles, mainly this one here. So I have a little hole here that is meant to uh, have a piece of string to tie this so that we can pull it up and down the idler, which is on the top of the 2020. So what I'll do is I'll select uh, my hotkey J for joints, and then I'll select this circle, little mounting hole there. 
And then what I'll do is I want to hide this guy here, the idler, because uh, it's in my way. So why not hide it? It's this one over here. And what I do is I want to line it up here at the top on this surface. And I just got lucky there. That's like where I want it to be in the center of the top of this uh, of this surface. So I'll click that. Fusion will kind of snap it there. And you'll notice that we got some intersection going on there. I kind of need to offset this on this axis so that uh, it's not intersecting with it. It kind of needs to be flat there. I've already gone ahead and done a measurement, but if I didn't have the measurement, let's say I don't, I, I'll hit OK. What I'll do is I need to measure um, this distance from this surface to this surface, and it's 6.1. So now I can go back into the joint and just type that into the offset right here in the Z. So we know that it is actually 6.1. And if we wanted to add some tolerances and stuff, we could add that here, but we don't need to because it's already, uh, the tons is already working. So now if we look at it from the top down, you'll see that the roller wheels are in the right placement uh, for the for the 2020 to roll down that 2020. Cool. Another thing we need to do is to kind of change the type. It was set to rigid, I, I believe. So we can just right click, edit joint, and then say, um, oh, it's on slider. Excellent. And it's on the Y axis. We could play around with them. If it came in in the wrong axis, we just play around until we get the right axis. Uh, but as uh, another thing I want to add is to offset it quite a bit, or not quite a bit, but once we bring back the idler, you can see that we're intersecting with that idler. So I just need to offset it slightly on the Z. So I'll just add like 30 millimeters or so. 30 right there. Cool. We could always change that too if we need to. We could always come back into the joint and edit it. Excellent. So now I have my roller carriage. Uh, properly positioned and placed and it, it seems to work right revert that position now the last thing to do is to attach the arm to the mounting holes on the roller plate uh, so it's going to be down here and i just hide that um that platform like that and also hide the the 2020 because it was in my way so i want to do this mounting hole right here and come back up here and let's pick this one right up there Whoops, like that. And there we go. We don't have to do any offsets. Excellent. Sometimes you might have to, and Fusion sometimes adds them for you. Like this, for example, the angle's 90 degrees. If I were to put zero, it would kind of mess it up. And uh, the motion type is still set to slider from the last one. So I'll, I'll switch it back to rigid because that's it's not going anywhere. All right, now we can bring back our hardware and our platform and give this, uh, give this slider motion a a test. Yeah, uh, you can see that there's no contact sets. Contact sets would uh, kind of make it so that none of these uh, bodies are intersecting with each other. So we can do that by going under assemble and then saying enable all contact. So now uh, Fusion will uh, look out for any potential things. So it stops right there. And then the, even the tip of the soldering iron will stop before it hits and crashes into the platform. So that's cool. So you can find out what are, what are some distances and things that way. Uh, but it kind of slows down your assembly a little bit. So it's, it's probably good to turn it off uh, uh, when you're done with it. But that's it. That's how quick it is to kind of swap out components. You can save out components and use them for other purposes. I'm still learning a lot about assemblies and things, but I thought I'd share with you uh, this particular project. The files are available to download if you want to build your own. I have the assembly instructions in this lovely guide so you guys can download the files or modify it to work with some components that you might already have on hand. That's going to be it for me, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys have any cool comments and, and uh, questions in the comments, please leave them. That's going to be it for me. I'll see you guys in the next one. But until then, remember to make a great day. Bye, folks.